Good afternoon, everyone. This is Christian with PerfectStockAlert.com, a 100% free service for smart investors and traders. All we ask in return, please refer a friend. Today, we're going to be looking at depreciation. As I do in each one of these videos, I will give you the actual definition and give you an example and maybe even take it a little step further and give you guys a little bit more insight into the actual terminology here. Uh, depreciation indicates how much of an asset's value has been used up in a period of time. Uh, for tax purposes, businesses can deduct the cost of the tangible assets they purchase as business expenses. However, businesses must depreciate these assets in accordance with IRS rules about how and when the deductions may be taken based on what the asset is and how long it will take or how long it will last. Uh, depreciation is used in accrual basis accounting to try to match the expenses of an asset to the income that the asset helps the company earn in a specific period of time. The most common method of depreciation is the straight line method of depreciation. Let me get the old tools right quick and I'll show you. I haven't drawn out here the actual formula. It's the cost of the asset, the total amount that it costs to purchase the asset. Uh, and then you minus the salvage value, and then you divide that number by the useful life. So let's uh, look at an example right quick. Okay, in this example, let's just say company XYZ buys uh, an asset. It's got to be a tangible asset in order to be talking about depreciation. If it's intangible, we'll be talking about something else. Uh, the, the cost of that asset was $150,000. And let's say that piece of equipment had a salvage value of $50,000. After it was all used up, they could probably sell it and, and make $50,000 on it. So uh, the useful life of this piece of equipment, they expect that to be about five years. And, of course, that's something that... Uh, you can have some leeway with there, but uh, in any event, they, they assume it's going to last five years. So this is how the math would work. We take the $150,000 cost, we put it right there. That's the cost of the asset. Then we take the salvage value, we subtract that from the cost of the asset, and then we get the $100,000. Then we divide this $100,000, or this uh, number here, um, by the useful life. We said the useful life was five years, so then we divide it by the five years. You do that by months, if you chose, or by years. And in this case, you get a depreciation, annual depreciation, of $20,000. So on the first year, you would write down $20,000. In the second year, another 20000 okay? And if you wanted to, you can get the accumulated depreciation by simply adding those two years together and say, okay, we've written off a total of $40,000. So okay, that would be the accumulated depreciation. Uh, now let's go look at some real examples. Anytime you want to know whether or not a company has uh, got some piece of equipment or, or asset, tangible asset they're trying to depreciate, you can go look at their income statement here. I'm on Google Finance. You can find this information almost anywhere. You cannot find it for some reason on Yahoo Finance because, as we've said before, Yahoo Finance is not known for having the most complete uh, data out there. So Google Finance does a better job in this case. Uh, the income statement for any company will show you the depreciation and amortization amount. So let's scroll on down and have a look at that. All right, move on down here. Okay, we got the old tools again. All right, here we can see we're looking at the uh, de depreciation and amortization, and they are together. Uh, the difference between these two is minute, and in actually in some cases, uh, people use them interchangeably. That's not accurate, but it does happen. Uh, like in Canada, they'll use them interchangeably. And the reality is depreciation is used for tangible assets, things you could touch and feel. Amortization is used for intangible assets, such as a license or a patent. Uh, something of that nature. Uh, they're both basically the same beyond that. Uh, one other minute detail would be that depreciation uh, would probably have uh, a, a salvage value above zero in many cases, while amortization wouldn't have a salvage value above zero in many cases. Uh, also in depreciation you can have a salvage value of zero if, that, if you didn't feel that you could find any value out of the the uh, asset once it had been used up. Okay. Now if we scroll on over here to the, the actual, let me get that all cleaned up so you can actually do that. Move on over here, depreciation. You can see for the past couple of years, I'm looking at Intel right now, depreciation right there is 260 million. Previous year is 18 million. And the previous year was 35 million. All right, now if you're asking yourself why are those numbers not the same, uh, the reality is in the real world, uh, a company would have many different items that they are uh, depreciating and amortization and amortizing uh, and these items were selected over different time periods so some of them are going to expire um, you know in a couple of years and others will be just now purchased and would be uh, you know on, on the books for a long time uh, so that's why your numbers are going to vary like that 
Now let's get into the tricky details here. Uh, in many of the cases, when you see these numbers here that are uh, recorded right here, uh, 35 million, 18 million, uh, 260 million, this is money that the company is taking and setting aside, knowing that eventually they will, in most cases, have to replace that asset. Uh, remember, you're depreciating it over its useful life. So at the end of its useful life, you need to replace that item or uh, cease using that item. Uh, so in, in many cases, this money is just being set aside to purchase that item ag again down the road. Uh, one asset, a tangible asset that is not depreciated would be real estate. Land is not depreciated, uh, though um, plants are and, and pro um, you know buildings that type of thing uh, would be uh, so whenever you're thinking about uh, looking at a company in, in this way some people do consider the fact that this money is just actually sitting in the corner there at a company they will use that they will actually use it to go increase the amount of uh, debt that a company can obtain uh, actually using this money here uh, as collateral that's kind of silly um, but it it is done and they do it believing that down the road they will actually um, the leverage they get from the debt will be able to um, afford them the ability to expand beyond the time uh, before the time period runs around where they're going to actually need this money again. And it's, I'm sure it's been done successfully. The reality is you can't predict what's going to happen in the future of the economy. And if you get in a tight squeeze, you can get caught with way too much debt on your books and then you get in a really bad spot. So, you know, there's just different ways to view it. I personally think that it's at a real expense of the company. They will eventually have to. Um, replace that equipment that's going to wear out and so forth and so on. So now you know. Please take a moment to review our disclaimer. The information provided herein is our opinion only. Under no circumstances do any statements here represent a recommendation to buy or sell securities or make any kind of an investment. You are responsible for your own due diligence. To summarize, we do not provide investment advice, nor do we make any claims or promises that any information here will lead to a profit, loss, or any other result. These videos are for educational purposes only.